Welcome to another video of Kayak Q Fishing TV. In this video, we're here to help you decide what stabilization kit is better for your kayak and your fishing needs. So if you do freshwater or saltwater, inshore or offshore, we're here to help you decide which stabilization kit you want to add to your kayak. So this is going to help you solve or give you a better option for your kayak stabilization. So stay tuned and see which stabilizer wins the versus competition today. Most of you have seen some of my videos. You haven't, make sure you go back and see a few of my videos back before when I had the Hobie Kayak Sidekick Amas hooked up to this Hobie Revolution 13. I had it hooked up with an outboard motor, a 3.5 Hunkai motor, um, and I happened to switch it up to this Hobie Adventure Island stabilization hit so to speak and I want to give you the pros and cons of both so it helps you decide which one is best for you just because I have this doesn't mean I like it and I love it and doesn't mean it suits all my needs so stay tuned all the way to the end to see what information is going to help you decide which one do you want for your kayak needs First, start off with the Hobie Sidekick Ama. It's one of the first kayak stabilization kits that I had for this Hobie Revolution 13. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and start with the pros. It's very easy to install less, uh, excuse me, less um, equipment or materials to install, and a key point here: less drilling you have to do for your kayak. So if you're not one of those experienced people that or hates to drill and install things to your kayak, the Hobie Sidekick Ama is not for you, but it is the one that has the least amount of drillings to your kayak. Okay, on the other hand, the Adventure Island setup, you do, you do have to do a lot more drilling to get it to be a stable and set up on your kayak the right way. All right, so if you do have a sit inside, a sit on top, or a small craft kayak or coo, uh, canoe or boat, you might want to decide based on today's video which one is going to be better for you. Okay? So the second key or pro to the Sidekick Ama is that it's inflatable. It's man powered. All it needs is your lungs. Okay? So once you have it drilled, on the, the bracket bar on your kayak where you want it, all you have to do is blow in two inflatable balloons, attach it via a pin, and you're set to go. So that is a pro for the Holy Sidekick Ama. Let's put it the second or third key here that we're talking about today about the Holy Sidekick Ama is the storage options. It is very easy to store if you do it right. What I mean by that? If you deflate it, disassemble the two bracket arms, you're able to install it in the inside of your hatch or the inside of most kayaks. So if you have a sit-in side kayak on the side gunnels, you'll be able to disinflate the balloons, fold them up, put them in the inside, and the extended bracket arms, slide them in on the side of your sit inside kayak. If you have a sit on top kayak, all you have to do is once again deflate and put the bars somewhere where they don't bother you and you got easy storage options including the inside of the hull. Okay, the benefits of having the Hobie Sidekick Ama that you're able to use 
two style motors for those that want to add a motor to your kayak. You want a, a trolling motor, you'll be able to add that. It's very light and useful for the trolling motor. For most of you that have been following my channel, know that I added an outboard motor using the Hobie Sidekick Amas. And I'm going to give you some two, two key points. I did use it without a counter balance. Counter balance. I did use it without there. And with the outboard motor, the equipment was very light. So more of the weight I got from the motor other than the stabilization and um, the amount of gear that I've taken. So that is a key point or a pro for the Hobie Sidekick Amas. So if you're that guy that does not take the kitchen sink and the whole kitchen with you, the Hobie Sidekick Amas are, are going to be great for you. So I recommend it for that use. If you're one of those guys that like to take the kitchen sink because you're precautious and everything, the Hobie Sidekick Ama might not necessarily be the one that you're looking for because it's limited to weight capacity. All right? Another key point for the Hobie Sidekick Ama is the application. What I mean by that is you're able to install it on a sit inside kayak, a sit on top kayak, a solo skiff, or a canoe, or uh, what they call a jump boat, depending the width and size. All right? That is one of the key features that's going to be a selling point for most of you that are going to decide, I want the whole beside Kikama because it's cheaper. Yes, it is cheaper, and that's another key point. For some of you guys that are looking to buy a stabilization kit, the Hobie Side Kikama, uh, it's, it's fairly reasonable. It's about 180 to 150 on a bad day, 200 bucks. If you get the knockoff brand from Wish or these other companies, you're going to get it less than 100 bucks, but you got to be careful of what they're offering. All right? Let's talk about another key point for the Hobie Side Kikama. The Hobie Side Kikama will allow you to stand up on your kayak depending on the placement of the kayak uh, of the, the the sidekick ama bar depending on the placement okay there's very different options of where to place it you can place it on the front of your kayak directly behind your seat on the kayak or closer to the rear of the kayak near the rudder those are three mounting options which is a pro for the Hobie Sidekick Ama. All right, another pro is that it's easier to flip. So in case you do flip your kayak in a way where it's like, wow, something happened, you flipped your kayak. The Hobie Sidekick Ama is easier to flip your kayak back over to the side where you're able to get in. That is a key point. And what I'm talking about, that's gonna help you in your situation and kayak needs. You're able to reflip your kayak in case of an emergency that you flip. The Hobie Sidekick ABBA might be the system or stabilization kit that you need. Okay, and the last and final key factor that I want to tell you about the Hobie Sidekick ABBA or the Pro, so to speak, is that it's a lighter kit, lighter setup for you. So if you have a kayak paddle board canoe that is weight dependent the Hobie Sidekick Ama will be the kit for you why? because it's air inflatable and is the lightest kayak setup that you will probably need for your kayak these are the pros for the Hobie Sidekick Ama kit if you like these pros then this is the everyone in this part of the video now we're going to go over the Hobie Adventure Island kit or stabilization kit and we're going to go over the pros so the, some of the pros are going to be beneficial for most of you some of you will be like well that's too much I don't want to install that I don't want to do this that and the other so listen here we go so we're going to start off with some of the pros for the Adventure Island kit setup once you install this kit one of the pros are, it is a easy setup installation. Meaning, all you gotta do is connect one, two, and four uh, bungee springs. So 
that's fairly easy, okay? That's not over the top, and a key point is that you're not using your lungs. So that's where I mean easy, okay? So one of the pros is it's a fairly easy installation or setup. On the beach, at the launch site, or wherever you look in the launch, is an easy setup. All right, another pro for the Adventure Island setup is that it is non-deflatable. So if you get a hook or something in this or try to hook up to the, the, the AMA or, the, or the, the float, it is deflatable. It's not deflatable. So a key selling point for this one is that it doesn't deflate in case you get a hook in something. All right, another pro for this is that you can use a trolling motor or an elbow motor. So a pro for the Hobie Adventure Island setup is that you can use it for an outboard motor for most of you offshore guys. And for the inshore guys, it is able to be used with a trolling motor, okay? Another pro for this kit is that if you get the complete sail mass, you're able to use the sail mass as an advantage for stabilization and speed for this setup, okay? Another pro for the Hobie Adventure Island kit is that it can handle rougher conditions, okay? It can handle rough conditions. You know, two foot swells, three foot swells, four foot swells, this will probably be a better setup for you if you like, you know, those rough conditions, okay? And the final key point or selling factor for this installation is the standing capabilities. And you're gonna say, well, I can stand up in the Hobie Sidekick Ama Kit. Yes, you can. I'm not saying that's not a selling point. But a selling point for this one is that the rougher the conditions, the more standing capabilities you're gonna be able to have. And what do I mean by that? Oh, four for 12s and I tried and I couldn't, I couldn't stay. No, I'm not saying that. But on a two foot swell with the sidekick armor kit, it's not recommended that you stand. Is it probable? Yes. Is it a lot more easier and prob probable for doing on this setup? Yes, it is. So a key or a pro for this is that you're able to stand up in more of a rougher light chop condition. All right, guys. So this half of the video, if you stuck along this far, we're actually gonna give you some of the cons of both setups, okay? The Sidekick Ama Kit is not a bad setup and is not the best setup. And the Hobie Adventure Island Kit is not the best setup, but it's not the worst setup either. So let's go through the cons and see which one has the least amount of cons to say I, it won the competition or it's the one not for me, all right? So let's go with the Hobie Sidekick Ama Kit. The one, and probably the most selling feature that a lot of people are gonna despise on and be like, that's not the one for me, is that it's deflatable. So if you get a hook, you puncture it, a cruzy, uh, I mean, a, a, a fish with big teeth or, or, you know, hits it, it deflates. And that's one of the key selling disadvantages for the Hobie Sidekick Ama, is that it's deflatable, okay? Yeah, everyone's gonna say, yeah, it's, it's, you know, I punctured it or I got a, or, or uh, a toothy fish hit it, snipped it, bit it, whatever. That's one of the key cons for the Hobie Sidekick Ama. Number two in cons for the Hobie Sidekick Ama is breaking it down at the launch site. And what do you, you're gonna say, hey, Q, what are you talking about? I disassembled mine and it was great. Yes. Was it fresh water or salt water? One of the key cons or dislikes that I had for the Hobie Side Kikama was the bracket arms that go here to attach the floats at the launch site. With slippery hands and salt water always attacking my, uh, my setup, I had trouble disassembling the bracket arms. One was great, the other one always had problems. Why? Because it's a, a plastic... Um, material that enters into aluminum. So the salt and the dryness 
always gave it problems to disassemble. Um, so that was one of the key uh, dislikes that I had with the Hobi Sidekick Ama. Third con that I have for the Hobi Sidekick Amas is that in really rough conditions, meaning a storm, just I was out there, it was flat calm, and half an hour later there's a storm coming in, and I got a lot, lot chip, it's a lot of chop, it's white capping. Sometimes there was a, a, a point where I felt that I, I still wanted to flip. That was one of the dislikes that I had for the whole East Side Kick on. And the last and final dislike or con for the whole East Side Kick on is that it looked a lot easier to break. And what do I mean by that? That if you grabbed the bracket arm a specific way, it looks like you either damage the hull or we're going to damage the, the bars. That for me was something I disliked or something like how we call a con that I didn't really want to happen. That's something that I had to think about and once I had it installed, yeah, but it was one of those things that, well, I had a narrow space to get through and I still had one bar that dis didn't disassemble. If I didn't get it through, I was going to damage that bar and the hull. So that was a con for me on the sidekick comma. Now let's get into the adventure island cons and dislikes. Okay. One of the key factors for a con for the adventure island setup is the selective mounting options and installation. Okay. If you have a sit-in kayak, it might work. You have the new Hobie Outback 2020 or 19 it's going to be harder for you to install and what I mean by that is you're going to probably have to install it over your front hatch and that's not cool because in case of an emergency you want to open your front hatch that's a disadvantage that you're going to have a second con for the adventure island is that you're going to need more storage options what do you mean oh storage options well storage options number one you're not going to be able to store it inside your kayak that's number one and number two the real storage options I'm talking about is either your vehicle or your home, wherever you're going to store it, you're going to need a little bit more options. Why? Because it's like having that AMA is like having a smaller or even a bigger kayak next to where you store this. So if you have an apartment or you, your storing options are very minimal, not for you. The most or key selling con that I have and a lot of you are going to agree with me is that it's more expensive okay if you bought the Hobie Adventure Island you paid for it itself but if you have another kayak an ocean kayak a Jackson kayak a Vibe um, whatever kayak you have I'm going to give you a key point here the Hobie Adventure Island is a lot more expensive the total price, if you go to a Hobie dealership and order it completely, is close to 800 bucks, anywhere from 600 to 800 bucks. Getting it secondhand used via OfferUp or Facebook Marketplace, you'll probably get it for about 400 to 600 bucks. If you order it individually, each part roughly, each the two Akas and the bars itself and the float itself. Or a little over a hundred bucks each so one two three four five maybe six selling points you're looking at close to 600 that's where you get that so that is probably the key or number one con that I have for the adventure island setup kit okay another con that I have for the adventure uh, adventure island setup kit is that it's harder to reflip your kayak if a worst case scenario you do flip your kayak so if you have a an Outback, a Revo, a Pro Angler, or whatever style kayak you have, if you were to completely flip the AMA in either direction, it's one of the hardest to reflip. So that is a con for me. Okay, another con is for the Adventure, uh, Adventure Island setup is that it's a heavier kit. The float itself is pretty heavy, not heavy, 
it's very light, but it's heavy enough or heavier than sidekick Amas. So it is a lot heavier in general. So might not necessarily be the setup that you want because it's a tad bit heavier. So if your kayak is weight dependent, this might not be the kit for you. Not that it adds a lot more pounds, but if you're limited to the weight capacity on your kayak, it might not necessarily be the setup you need. Yeah, most kayaks now are 250 pounds uh, or more capacity. I'm not saying it adds a lot more weight, but it does in a key point of depending the amount of gear you're taking and the weight that you are, or the, the weight that you have in general. So if you're a 200, 350 pound guy, your kayak capacity is maybe 250, 275, maybe 300, this kit might not necessarily work for you, okay? So another con that I have to say about the Adventure Island setup, that it's not for every kayak. It is not for every kayak, every small craft. Okay, why? Because of the, the the access points of where you have to drill it, you might not have that on your kayak, your canoe, your small craft, or your sit on top. So that is a key con for the adventure island. And this is going to be the next con that I'm talking about. It's going to be the second most highest con that I have. And, refer and referencing to having this kayak set up. And you're probably talking about, Q, what are you talking about? Okay, what I'm talking about is the amount of drilling you're going to have to do to your kayak or setup, canoe, outboard, whatever you have to do, you have to then do more drilling. You have to do one, two, three, four, five, six, two, four, six, about six drilling points on your hull. So if you want the least amount of drilling for the stabili stabilization kit, the Adventure Island is not for you. Okay, let me repeat that. You got to do six drilling points to set up the Hobie Adventure Island stabilization kit for your kayak. So if you don't want that, this is not the kit for you. And that is a con for me and for most of you are going to say, I don't want to drill six holes in my kayak. Because if not, if you do that, you're going to have a lot of issues later on, then this is not the setup for you. I've made it work for my kayak on the Hobie Revolution 13, and I cannot complain. But it might not be the one for your setup. So what, overall, between the pros and the cons, the dislikes and the options here, I'm going to say... The Hobie Sidekick Ama wins the Versus to a point. And you're talking about, what do you mean it wins? The Hobie Sidekick Ama wins. Well, it's the most affordable, the least amount of drilling, and the lightest amount of weight that I need to add to my kayak. In that aspect, it wins. But for me, and what I have now, it's not that I love it, but it wins me over. It's going to be the Hobie Adventure Island kit stabilization kit and what you're gonna say well okay yeah you went through the ponds and coves whatever for me for offshore fishing gives me the most stabilization for wind I have the vertical jig slow pitch jig stand up and the rough conditions this is the one that works for me so which stabilization kit is the best one for you that's up to you to decide in this case or in this versus the one that actually won the versus competition today is going to be the Hobie Sidekick Ama. It's very affordable, easy to install, less drilling, and it's universal for most applications. And that's the reason why the Hobie Sidekick Ama wins today's versus. Maybe tomorrow, the Hobie Adventure Island is going to win. But right now, there's more pros than cons. For the Hobie Sidekick Ama kit. Well, you're going to say, Q, the Adventure Island is better. Yes, but not for every application. So in this case, in today's versus competitions between stabilization kits, the Hobie 
sidekick ammo wins. But Q, you have the adventure island on your setup. Doesn't mean I don't love it. Doesn't mean I don't like it. It is the one that works for me at this point. So think about the options I gave you, the pros and the cons. See which one works for you. Stay tuned for another adventure of Kayak Fishing TV, where we do adventures, how-tos, kayak-related fishing reviews, and we help you become a better angler. So make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Comment below which setup is best for your kayak. So once again, comment below and tell me which setup is better for your kayak needs. I look forward to seeing your comments below. Make sure you subscribe, and I'll see you on the next video.